Hi, I'm Sarah Parsons, Digital Editor of Cosmetics Business, and today Cosmetics Business is in conversation with Laura Schliebers, Multi-Oil Manager of Ingredient Supplier AAK. And before we get started on our wonderful interview with Laura discussing all things sustainability and share butter, um, I just want to point out that make sure you watch until the very end because we have some lovely footage from AAK's direct sourcing program. So make sure you stay around to watch that at the very end of the video. So thank you, Laura, for joining us today. How are you? Thank you, Sarah, for having me. I'm really good. Good. Hi. So just for everyone watching who perhaps might be new to AAK, can you provide some background info about what the company does and perhaps what it stands for? Absolutely. Um, AAK is not a very catchy name, I can imagine. It stands for um, Aarhus Karlshams, which is uh, back in the day a merger between two of the major uh, plant-based oils processing companies in Scandinavia, uh, one in uh, Sweden, one in Denmark. And today we are um, quite a, um, a large global company focusing only on plant-based oils with different business departments, one of, one of which is of course our personal care department and that's uh, why we're here today. Ooh. And right, like you said, natural products you guys focus on today we're going to be talking a lot about shea butter and yeah. part of that from the consumer's perspective and perhaps brand owners or definitely brand owners as well is that connection to sustainability which is obviously a hot topic right now we've had cop 26 just not too long ago so from that point of view what is aak's stance in terms of climate change and importantly carbon emissions I guess. Uh, it's it's of course really really important for for AAK. Uh, we're just about to set um, our science-based targets um, for scope one, two and three and that means also including our supply chains um, and it's quite commonly known that the biggest carbon emissions are actually um, emitted in the supply chains so it's not under our direct control but it happens upstream. Um, so we really um, need to find ways in supporting our upstream supply chains and reducing and decarbonizing um, the supply chain. Uh, and carbon emissions are a key focus area here. Um, I think it's important to, to note that CO2 emissions, it's not the only topic that we should be focusing on um, as sustainability is so much more. Um, but for now, that's really the hot topic. So we um, are looking at different ways to supporting farmers um, in achieving emission reductions. Um, and I think that's uh, a really big responsibility of companies um, to take because the biggest pressure right now is on people that are sometimes also playing um, the least influential role in, in a supply chain. Um, so they need to change their behaviors for companies like AAK and our customers to register carbon savings. So it's a, definitely a shared responsibility here. Absolutely. And I like that concept of you, it's a 360 conversation, isn't it? It's not just about carbon emissions, it's so much more of that. Um, and I know we well, we chatted before, and it's something I really wanted to highlight today with AAK's innovation in regards to rocket stoves. Yeah. What is a rocket stove? It, it's, a, it's a really nice fancy name for something that's actually super simple and super traditional. Um, but especially if we're looking at the Shea supply chain, um, we have done life cycle assessments of the Shea supply chain and where the biggest carbon hotspots happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the hotspots in Shea supply chain is actually um, in the post-harvest processing phase. Um, so in the phase where um, women boil the she kernels to stop germination um, so that a really good oil quality is uh, maintained. Um, and usually they, they do that over open fires um, and they use wood as a fuel source here. That's the, the most common fuel source uh, of people in West Africa where Shea, Shea originates. Um, and it's quite an inefficient process because in an open fire, the heat goes everywhere and some of it goes up. Um, and with these rocket stoves, we use 
um, different locally available, really low cost materials mm -hmm. to build a stove around it or like a contain the fire so that they can place a pot on top and they can put wood underneath. Mm -hmm. um, and there is really good evidence that this is a, a significant emission reduction and uh, increase of efficiency of the whole process. Um, and what I really like about that is that um, it doesn't cost a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, it's mainly a training. So we train women in building these stoves so it can be replicated mm -hmm. rather than a donation. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really kind of a capacity building, a knowledge spread, spread rather than um, maybe just a good story. So um, I think that's that's really important if, if we think about um, any activities within a supply chain, that it's simple and it's scalable and ideally it's low cost because then it has the chance to, to really be be maintained over a longer period of time. For sure. And you touched on then about who you work with. You mentioned women and the farmers. And one of the lovely things from a brand's perspective about Shea Butter is that storytelling opportunity of who the farmers are. And so can you tell me more about that, who AAK work with and the women that you guys work with? Definitely. And uh, I think it's really good that you highlight that because Shea is a super special supply chain in that sense, um, because it's uh, nearly exclusively uh, a woman activity. Um, and it's a, it's, it's um, a group of women that are not um, Shea collectors or Shea farmers as their um, main activity. They are actually um, smallholder farmers as their main activity and they do the Shea collection on the side. Um, and what's really, really important is that all the money um, that they earn with Shea Collection is for the women. With the farming, it's often um, shared between the women and their husbands, and a lot of it goes into the household. But for the women that earn money with Shea, they can keep that for themselves. And then um, they often invest it in their children, in healthcare, or in kind of future business activities. And it is one way of breaking the poverty circle in that region um, in West Africa, because it's really people that don't have access to a lot of resources uh, where Shea grows. So that makes it even more important to kind of connect it to markets um, and understand how much work goes into the supply chain at origin before it um, reaches the shelves in the shops uh, here. Absolutely. And that's what that video at the end of um, today's interview is all about, is your direct, so, so, direct sourcing program. And I know there's some lovely um, short interviews with some of the women that you work with. So, yeah. And we've talked a lot about the current and what's happening now and how you the past and how you developed to come to be. So in terms of the future and sustainability, what is your stance on that? Where do you think? what in terms of the broader conversation within the beauty industry but also what's happening at AAK? I think the, um, uh, the future will be more and more the type of supply chain that we have developed within our Kuluna Faso program um, where we are focusing very much on traceability and transparency. It's a direct sourcing supply chain where we are um, basically engage in a win-win model with the women because we are um, as a company uh, making sure that we can report everything that's necessary we have the data um, available and uh, and control where our raw materials are come from um, and for the women they have the direct support from a company they have a guaranteed market outlet there is trainings uh, and information coming their way um, and I feel like that is really where the consumers also um, are going right now. It's, it's a request um, from consumer level to have full disclosure on the raw materials in products. Um, and there is a bigger and bigger request on ethical supply chains as well. So supporting the people right at the beginning of a supply chain. Um, and that is what Corona Faso enables. Um, but we would never say that Corona Faso is the perfect solution and everything is solved through it. It's, a, it's an ongoing um, improvement process. And um, for example, we have a survey every two years with, um, with a really representative sample of our program. So about a thousand women are being interviewed then. 
um, and we get a feedback on um, how they experience the program, what we could do better, uh, what they're missing, um, and what they're also doing with the different trainings and how it's, how it's actually being used. Um, and I think that is really helping us to take a step, step by step approach. So every time we get the feedback, there is something that we, that we can implement and improve. Um, so that's one way. And the other way is through um, collaboration with our customers. So for example, um, we know that wood is the number one fuel source in the area. So there's um, trees consumed. And um, so there is a need also for replanting, uh, for example or the rocket stoves, uh, that's a really, really great investment opportunity um, for, for AAK together with our customers to scale that up. Because currently uh, we're tracking around, um, I think 17,000 stoves in total, and we have more than uh, nearly 350,000 women part of the program. So there is uh, room for really scaling, scaling this up, but it takes time and it takes resources. And we of course need to make sure that the trainings are carried out on a, on a high quality level so that um, it's not just a tick mark, but that actually knowledge is, uh, is um, retained and uh, kept for a long time and uh, spread from, from woman to woman um, in the villages. So definitely huge potential still for the future. I think that's the main message with sustainability that you start tackling different areas and then you get a little bit better every year, every time uh, that you start working on something new. Wonderful. Thank you, Laura. That's a fascinating take on sustainability and, like you say, full of optimism and promise, which I think is so exciting about the sector right now. Um, but that is actually all what we have time for today um, with our interview with Laura. So thank you very much for everyone who is watching. Um, and before we get started on our video, which um, definitely stay for and watch that. Um, if you want to see more exclusive interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cosmetics Business, or head to cosmeticsbusiness.com. And so thank you, Laura, and I'll speak to everyone soon. Bye. Thanks. When the she picking season starts in June, there is often not much money left from last year's sale of she kernels. Many families cannot afford to buy the food they need, and they are forced to sell their crop for a low price, a trap that repeats year after year. For the women she collectors, one of the biggest benefits of Colo Nafaso is the interest-free microcredits given in spring, when resources are scarce and money is most needed. <laughs> The direct contact between AAK and the women has enabled development of a segregated supply chain with full traceability and, more importantly, established long-term fair and transparent business relationships between AAK and the Colo Nafaso women's groups. First launched in 2009, Colo Nafaso now engages hundreds of thousands of women she collectors in West Africa. A sustainable win-win opportunity for all. Ma opa yun na did dana dobar pa yon doyipo to gulo.